Jody Hoddle's most recent chapbook is Out of the Ashes from Pandemonium Press. Her previous chapbooks are Voyeur from Word Tech Press in 2017 and Heart Mountain, winner of the 2012 Blue Light Press Poetry Prize. Jody has been published in Nimrod International, Spillway, Ekphrasis, and anthologies from the University of Iowa Press, Thibaut Bach, and Marin Poetry Center. Her work has been nominated for a Pushcart Prize. I'm going to show you a couple of covers. Here is Boyer, wonderful book, and Heart Mountain. Please welcome Jody Hoddle. Thank you, Sandy, um, for inviting me to read, especially with Diane. That was a pleasure. Um, it was a pleasure to hear so many of your poems, Diane. I have not heard that many of them in the past. And for those of you in the audience who wouldn't know, Sandy, Diane, and I were in a workshop together at Napa Valley Writers Conference last summer. And it's good to be together again, even virtually. And thanks to all of you who are attending tonight. As I was preparing, I realized how many of you either appear in or were influences on these poems. So I thank you for that. Um, I'm gonna read a few poems written during the height of the pandemic that will be appearing in my, in a hopefully forthcoming chapbook with the working title, Towing the Brink. And then I'll read some brand new poems, recent poems. This uh, first poem I'm sure all of you are gonna be able to relate to. It's titled, Sheltering in Place. Today is just the same as yesterday, the yesterday before that, and the yesterday we had last week. Only difference is the color on the air quality app or the horizon. In earlier todays and yesterdays, I found the days to be wing beats opportunities to untangle myself, cull old photos, clean closets, tend my garden. I guffawed at memes and internet jokes. None of them amused anymore. The skies are sullied. Today is a pretense and yesterday is uninhabitable. So this next piece is a prose poem that I wrote a couple of months into the pandemic and somebody should recognize themselves in this one, I think. Tick, tick. Well, I'm eating my yogurt and blueberries, mulling over a poem and the shades of my blinds are turned against the bright sun and distraction of neighbors walking their dogs repeatedly because they're all sheltering at home. There's a line from a song that goes, it's the end of the world as we know it, that's been playing on the jukebox in my brain lately. And that's what it feels like these days. And now my elderly dog is scratching at the door I've shut against her to avoid interruptions. She's not doing all that well, her hind legs getting weak, her brassy spirit vanished along with her hearing. I should have never read that book about the climate crisis. I wanted to think that the cascades of chaos would be farther off in the future, but it feels like it's begun now with this virus, an avalanche of catastrophes burying us in deep, deep snows. Though there are the crested jays constructing a raggedy twiggy nest on top of the motion light over our patio. And of course, the sky sparkles. The Matilia poppies I passed on my walk this morning are spreading their white crepe paper petals to display sunny centers that remind me of that ubiquitous image of the coronavirus on the news hour every night. I'm on Zoom and mute the sound because I can hear the tick of a clock, or at least I think I hear the tick of a clock. It feels like the tick of the virus time bomb ready to, to blow. It feels like the virus has invaded my brain and the inability to write or think about anything else is my only symptom. 
This poem is from later in that first year of the pandemic when we in California were impacted by fires as well as the pandemic. I'm not sure if any of you will recall a couple of the events I refer to here, but they are preserved here in this poem. Because this is California. Because this is California, after I pour my morning cup of coffee, I refresh the fire incident map, then check the air quality app. The sky is tea colored, and I'm not sure if I should go for a stroll, work in the garden, or stay shut indoors. Because this is California, Burning Man celebrants crowd Ocean Beach, despite the ban on large gatherings during the pandemic. And a conflagration is ignited by pyrotechnics at a gender reveal party. It's a boy. We're all edgy in the sixth month of this rift in our routines. But because this is California, we think we deserve a break more than, say, Nebraska or Alabama. Because this is California, we know there's a giant snoring beneath the ground who might waken any day. Because this is our home, our golden state, we roll over in bed and check the latest Nixle alert, then go back to sleep to the lullaby of tanker planes. I was quite taken by a poem, Problems in Vocabulary by Tony Hoagland, who is one of my favorite poems, poets, excuse me, and my poem took off from there. More problems in vocabulary after Tony Hoagland. There's no particular noun for the despair that chews your organs from the inside out till you're hollow. No verb for envying the dead, how they no longer need fear the air they breathe. No participial phrase for hunting for a source of hope, then tiring of the search. There's no expression, in English at least, for the loss of touch, that faint remembrance of skin on skin, brush of lips, the wondering if you only dreamt embrace. No adjective for wanting it all back because you never knew how little you knew. Certainly no name for skies that rain, sticky soot, cast an orange gloom for the panic ignited in your pulse. Nor are there words for a bereaved mind for towing the brink, then stepping back. Um, I wrote this poem as we neared the end of 2020, the first year of the pandemic and used that familiar phrase of the time out of an abundance of caution as the title. Out of an abundance of caution, today is canceled. Moon shrugs, stars laugh, isolation chills, the tether chafes. Uncertainty holds the reins. In extremis, urgency is the only color. Reality leaves something to be desired and doesn't look back. Yet another new normal. On the precipice of now, each day clarifies the self's solitary struggle. Settling in, settling down. Today, tiny comforts. Sun leaks through clouds. Maple hums lit by a fire within. Um, somehow, seeing our wheelbarrows languishing in the backyard got conflated with um, the supply chain shortages. Statistical. Out of five wheelbarrows, two have broken handles, two others have flat tires. Number five needs to be emptied. At the grocery store, at least two out of a dozen items on my list are out of stock. When I inquire, I'm told 100% of the time, the item is languishing on a container ship. On average, 
People touch their cell phones 2,617 times a day. No one walking this path is on a cell phone, but at least 50% have dogs. In the month of August 2021, 4.3 million people quit their jobs, a record number. Pundits posit half a dozen theories why. In the last 18 months, nine friends have died and two moved away. And we lost one beloved dog of 16 years. I have one spouse, one son, one stepdaughter, one brother, and one new dog. Not a huge family. Just one sun and one moon have risen and set more times than can be tallied. Grains of sand, stars, why bother? Delta is the fourth letter in the Greek alphabet. Omicron is the 15th. We're bombarded with statistics that invoke high alert. Numbers of pandemic deaths, hospitalizations, infections, people vaccinated or not, rate of species extinction, sea level rise, degrees of global warming. The two courses in which I underachieved, chemistry and statistics. Okay, I'm going to transition to some more recent poems. Um, I've learned from sharing this with people that this is a, an experience that most of us have had. Sometimes I see them. Today in the cereal aisle at Trader Joe's, Mary's lanky frame walked past me not recognizing my masked face since she died before the pandemic. Last week, I startled hearing Shirley's Pennsylvania twang from somewhere across the Costco parking lot, startled because she died from COVID last year. At times while waiting at a stoplight, I've caught a glimpse of my ex's bearded face in the cab of his old Dodge pickup. Some nights in vivid dreams, my mother whispers her final words to me. I will always love you. Then we set the dining table for guests. Uh, this fall, I was fortunate enough to attend the Dodge Poetry Festival in Newark, New Jersey. And this next poem is a cento which is a collage created from lines by other poets. In this case, the lines were gleaned from the opening night celebration reading by over 20 poets. Um, although you can't see the poem on the page, each line of the poem is by a different poet, including the title. One Big Outrageous We, a cento from the Dodge Poetry Festival readings 2022. I try to hide from knowing that I am of a people of thieves, my own self, my quarry, terrified of luck. I have the blood of survivors coursing through my veins, undoing fault lines between one generation and the next. We make a game of our terrors, feel entitled to a spine, quixotic quaking in all our blind spots. This is the city you lost. Dizzying churn of days, turning the present into purgatory. The light the dead sing, prayers they pretend to say, sung to the applause of silence. In the country of poetry, rain keeps falling in 14 lines, rhymes internal and irregular. The singer's song fits into the mouth, purring its presence. The river stones are listening. Water does all the laughing. Look at the trees who suffer us to touch them. I wear September on my face, air heavy with waterfall. I want to love more fluently. It's the only thing I ever wanted.
when the images from the James Webb telescope first appeared, I thought, I have to write a poem about this. And I'm sure I wasn't the only one. Expanding universe. Because the earth is tilted on its axis by 23 and a half degrees, I'm always off kilter. My steps missing the mark, thoughts askew, my vision sidelong. Because the cartwheel galaxy is 500 million light years from earth, yet the telescope's image is bright and crisp, my mind grows mossy. The more astronomers expand the universe, the more I want to clean the closet. Because physicists have posited parallel universes, I've become fearful of mirrors and quantum mechanics makes me feel a nap coming on. Because the images from the James Webb telescope are vibrant, I find them useful as screensavers, though I'm nostalgic for that first photo of Earth from space. String theory vibrates my brain. And I wish they'd solve the theory of everything once and for all. Then I could take a soothing soak in the hot tub and watch the moon rise. This is my closing poem. And it was written from a prompt given by Major Jackson our superb workshop leader at Napa Valley Writers Conference last summer. Um, and for those of you who might not know or use them as frequently as I do, an M dash is mentioned. And that is an extra long dash, my favorite mark of punctuation. Uh, thank you all for being here and listening. Jody doesn't want to put her name in a poem. Her superpower is invisibility. She's beige or gray, though eggplant is her favorite vegetable. She's super spontaneous, not true. Maker of lists, true. Invests in advanced planning. Her mother's years behind barbed wire is one inheritance. Her minister father's skepticism is another. She's an M dash kind of girl. She's fond of open books and jet stream pens, doesn't embrace small talk. In a past life, she was a potato farmer. True or false? Now she tends a modest plot of tomatoes. She's more root than blossom. She's a pebble in your warm palm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jody. I'm going to invite everyone to unmute. <laughs>